I am so glad that Phoenix has been a leader in honoring our employees who we've lost too soon. The employee memorial ceremony is a way we recognize and remember city employees who've given the ultimate sacrifice to serve the residents of Phoenix. The annual employee memorial recognition is very important to our membership because it ensures the remembrance and respect for those heroes who have given their lives in service to the citizens of Phoenix. So it's always tragic when we lose any employee on the job, but we'd just like to thank you for participating in today's memorial and helping us honor our fallen heroes. Not only is the Phoenix City Memorial unique in that, you know, most other cities don't have a memorial for those who have died on the line of duty. It is the only one that has civilians in it. So that's important from a civilian unit that represents detention officers and 911 dispatchers that, you know, represents crime lab technicians and those in the front line of fire inspectors. So to have our members remembered and their sacrifice remembered is very important. An employee memorial wall was built in 1994 in the city of Phoenix to pay tribute to city employees who have died in the course of their work, dating back to 1925. Every year there's a ceremony. It's now a tradition, one that's recognized by other cities. Arms. When I talk to other mayors, they ask me about our memorial and how they might bring one to their city because it is such an important place to honor those we've lost, but also for quiet reflection or prayer or just an opportunity for family and coworkers to have a place. But the city carries on tradition to honor those lives lost. The city family has lost two prominent public safety heroes this past year, police commander Greg Carnicle and firefighter David Mathis. And in the spirit of tradition, let's take a moment of silence and reflection as we hear the police and fire honor guard pay tribute at the beautiful public employee memorial that was designed in 1994 by local artist Otto Regan. Forward! March! Color guard, right, face. Ready, post. Recover. Ready, face. Present arm. Order arm. Ready, face. In memory of all the city of Phoenix employees who've died in the line of duty, and most recently, Phoenix Police Commander Gregory Carnicle and Phoenix Firefighter David Mathis retired. The bell and the pipes now toll for you. Present on. Order on. Color guard, left face. Piper, by your command, sir.
forward, march. There are currently 86 employees who have been included in the employee memorial, their names etched in glass. This year, two names will be added to the public art memorial, making it 88. Last year, in 2020, the city of Phoenix lost police commander Greg Carnicle and firefighter David Mathis. To commemorate these two public safety heroes, they too will have their names etched as a permanence of their memory. There are far too many names of first responders on our employee memorial. The work they do is difficult and dangerous, but this year the losses, I think, hit very close to home for so many. Commander Greg Carnicle was the highest ranking member of the Phoenix Police Department to give his life in the line of duty. When the world thinks of 2020, the world could think in terms of global pandemic. The world could literally think in terms of um, public unrest. For the Phoenix Police Department, it was definitely uh, so much more than that because it was in 2020 that we lost one of our own, Commander Greg Carnicle, uh, as he was killed in the, in the line of duty. Greg went into a home in North Phoenix where an individual was being asked to leave by his roommates and he didn't. And instead of sending others in to lead the charge, Greg Carnicle, the commander that I know, led from the front. He died in the line of duty, but I, I am certain that he was guarding an angel and or the shield to make sure that Officer Lisa Hubert and Officer Marissa Dowen did not perish also. It's one thing to send someone up the stairs, it's another thing to be the person to lead the charge, and that's the kind of person Greg was. Uh, commander, Lieutenant, multiple medals of valor, distinguished service award, um, he was a tactical guru uh, because he worked SWAT and SAU um, and anyone who mentioned him or spoke of him spoke of him as a leader and a mentor. The Greg I knew uh, cared so much more about his family, family, his biological family as he did his police family. Um, devoted and loving father, uh, devoted husband, devoted grandfather, devoted uncle, family was everything to him. So uh, first and foremost to the Carnicle family, uh, you will forever be in our hearts, our minds, our spirits forever. We are you, you are us, we are always here. Um, behind me is the wall of honor that we have here. And you see that Greg's badge is the last badge that's on there. He'll be missed. I think one of the most sacred responsibilities that we have is to give honor where honor is due. One of the most sacred privileges we have is to grieve with those who grieve. Grief is not a problem to get beyond or some kind of barrier to get over. It's just simply a sacred expression. We do both of those when we honor a fallen officer. We honor them for the service they have given, the protection they have provided. We honor them for the courage that it took to do what they were doing when their life was taken. And most importantly, we remind the family that we love them, we don't forget them, and that they are priority to us when we grieve alongside them. Our hearts go out to the Mathis family as well as the Phoenix Fire family for this very difficult loss. As we remember his service and all he did for the city, I know that Phoenix Fire is committed to better procedures, protecting our employees more. We're also trying to make sure that Phoenix is on the forefront of fighting cancer. I hope that when we find a path to curing cancer, the city of Phoenix can have committed real resources to advancing treatments and cures. We have lost far too many to cancer. Dave Mathis is the epitome of the firefighter you would want as a fire chief to work for your department. He's the epitome of whom you would want to work in your fire station. Um, Dave came on about eight years before me, but I remember meeting Dave at a young age, and he was that person. When you walked into the room, he lit up the room. He was very kind, he was knowledgeable, he shared his skills with you. 
he was successful, he wanted you to be successful. He always was there, he, was, he showed up early, he did his job. But Dave as a person was amazing. Um, I did, I drove into a station or I had constant staff at station 15 and that's when I first met him and he truly was a welcoming individual. Dave was the person that would walk up and shake your hand and welcome you into his firehouse, into his home. Dave's career was in essence cut short because he was diagnosed with cancer. You know, he left after 30 amazing years. He probably would have stayed to 37, maybe 40, because he was young, he was energetic, he was vibrant, and he loved what he did. He loved his craft, and he, he came to work every day knowing he wasn't, you never know what you're going to be exposed to. So, but what saddens me even more is that it just cut his life short. He was, he was courageous and brave in every sense of the word. He got in there and he fought, and you can't help uh, but getting exposed to things, no matter how well you're prepared with all your gear and everything. But he was there doing it, as we say. At the end of the day, the city remembers us. And that's, that's the best, that's good. We want the citizens to know you know, we want a place to go where the name can be seen. We will always remember this, his spirit, his craft, his skill set, what he brought to the American Fire Service, and it is on display at City Hall. We will never forget Firefighter Mathis for the wonderful work that he did and what he gave to his community up to giving up his life for our community. Every year, each city labor union is represented as we mourn and remember those lives lost. The employee memorial means to me and our members that the city takes care of the fallen and their families and shows respect for the fallen. Layuna represents a thousand employees at the city of Phoenix and the departments they're at is public works, streets, sign shop, parks, and mailroom. We have lost 10 members throughout the years, and what we do as a union to every day to protect our employees is make sure they have proper PPE. Uh, we have safety classes we hold once a month. Every, make sure they have proper work boots, high-vis uniforms so that they're, high, they're visible, and we try to keep them the safest we can. We appreciate the city as a whole because they do take care of their employees. These are the members that Layuna La Local 777 has lost over the years. Antonio Herrera, Fred S. Satillo, Raymond Flone, Robert L. Reed, Ramon C. Osario, Larry Matthews, John Robert Gomez, John Stallworth, Albert Pena, and Richard Sarasosa. PLEA is the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association and we have just over 2,200 members, so we represent the rank and file police officers, the officers you see out in the patrol cars and the detectives. So we've lost 43 members over the years. Uh, this memorial assists us not only with mourning, but remembering and helping our extended blue family uh, keep their family members in mind. Um, this could happen to us at any time. One of us may have to give our lives for our jobs and for our community. Uh, so it helps us to remember those that have gone before us. Hayes Birch, Walter H. Stewart, Jess Ritchie, Albert R. Bloom, Dale C. Stone, Quincy Clay Haywood, Michael D. Hemschmeyer, Gilbert R. Chavez, Arthur E. Del Guadio, Ignacio G. Conchos, John R. Davis, Kenneth E. Campbell, Kevin W. Forsyth, Errol C. Rusty Hawkins, Robert L. Palmentier, John A. Robertson, Robert T. Fike, Kenneth L. Collings, Patrick O. Briggs, 
Leonard L. Kalaji, Timothy D. Landers, Scott F. Smith, Mark Atkinson, Gillette Booth, Beryl Wayne Scott, Don R. Schultz, Eric J. White, Jason A. Wolf, Daryl E. Yos, Paul Salmon, David Uribe, George V. Cortez Jr., Nick James Earthley, Shane Figueroa, Travis Paul Murphy, Daryl Rates, John Hobbs, David Glasser, Paul Rutherford, Aspetia is the uh, Administrative Supervisory Professional and Technical Employees Association. Um, so we represent uh, about a little over 3,200 city employees um, in uh, every department in the city. The Employee Memorial Recognition is an important event uh, for me personally because two of the uh, employees that are recognized were my co-workers and I happen to be working with them on the on the days they, they lost their lives. Uh, from uh, the perspective of Aspatia, I think it, uh, the employee memorial uh, recognition is, uh, represents the, the very strong working relationships between management and employees and the labor groups. That we have a memorial, I believe we're the only city in the country that has a memorial. Um, and actually does a recognition event for the employees that, that have lost their lives in, in service to the community. Safety is first and foremost on the job for, for Aspatia and for all labor groups. If I could add anything, it's, it's to, um, to thank all of the employees in the city over the last year for the sacrifices that they've made. We've had, unfortunately, uh, we've lost uh, 10 employees um, just to this pandemic. And um, but so many more have have um, gotten sick, um, uh, jeopardized their health and their safety to keep our community and our public safe, um, whether it's in 911 or or keeping the water flowing or the airport operating. Um, we have, like I said, so many employees that have sacrificed so much during the last year that, you know, I, I, I'd like to thank them and um, it makes me proud to work for the city. Curtis L. Petty. Louis J. Hanscom. Ann L. Mortar. James P. Hayes. Ann Hansen. Marvelou Rose. So American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees uh, represents all unit to skilled trade uh, employees in the city of Phoenix in 12 different departments and totaling 1,500 employees. We span from everywhere from water services, aviation, public works, uh, police, fire, uh, streets, um, and uh, neighborhood services. So the employee memorial means uh, quite a bit to the employees, um, just honoring those who have lost their life on the job and just paying respect to the, their loved ones and their family members and their friends. Over the years, AFSME has lost uh, six brothers um, on the job uh, to, to work-related injuries. Um, we continue to strive to honor those employees by making every effort to minimize any potential dangers or hazards that exist in the workplace today. William C. Fulcher. Samuel Al Wilson, Joe A. Diaz Jr., Hugh T. McMurray Jr., Edward Goldberg, and Robert DeMar. Ben Leuschner, I'm a lieutenant, and I am the president of the Phoenix Police Sergeants and Lieutenants Association. So I represent the sergeants and lieutenants of the Phoenix Police Department, 
uh, and we have over 400 members. For me personally, the memorial represents something where we are able to actually reflect on the sacrifices that people make in the jobs that they do for the city. Obviously, from our point of view, the police department. What happens so often in our lives is we get busy with families, soccer games, school, uh, projects at work, and we forget so quickly what happened. Our association has lost three sergeants in the history of uh, PPSLA and the police department. Um, obviously, Greg Carnicle was a former member who promoted to commander from our ranks, and we also recently tragically lost him. What we try to do as far as uh, preventing those kind of issues is we focus heavily on training. We encourage the police department and the city to focus in on training uh, to make our jobs as safe as possible. You know, we do want to recognize the leadership of the city because th there's an opportunity here for people to do nothing at all. And instead, the city actually makes a concerted effort to actually recognize the employees every single year, year in, year out. And that's a true dedication to the memories of those people that we have lost in the past. So we, we do want to thank the leadership of the city for that. Sergeant John W. Dumblinski, Sergeant Danny L. Turney, Sergeant David Marty Kiefer. I'm Frank Pacioli, and I'm president of ASPE Local 2960. We represent over 2,500 Unit 3 employees in the city of Phoenix. Unit 3 ranges from detention officers to 911 dispatchers, from operation assistants at the airport to crime lab technicians. We are actually in each and every department in the city of Phoenix, and we're considered the pre-professional unit in the city. The employee memorial means a great deal to me, both personally and in my membership. My father was a New York City firefighter who was burned and injured in the line of duty. So I grew up knowing that member, you know, remembering those that sacrifice for others is a vital part of serving the public. My membership appreciates the memorial because it's an eternal reminder of that sacrifice and service. Since I've been president of Local 2960 in the last 10 years, we've added three names to that memorial. Megan Lang, a fellow 911 dispatcher with the fire department, killed by a wrong way driver and murderer while she was going home on a forced furlough. Paula Carroll, who was shot at work when a gunman opened fire in the city of Phoenix personnel building back in 92, and who succumbed to her injuries in 2014. And Robert Scully, who died in the line of duty after inspecting the new cityscape in downtown Phoenix for safety. The unions made sure to do everything we can to ensure workplace safety by increased security and checkpoints entering the building. As well, and most importantly for us, we try to take care of the families that are left behind in these tragedies. With COVID, we've made sure that proper PPE is issued. I want to thank the mayor. I want to thank the city council and all those who made sure this memorial not only has stood, but will continue to stand as a sacrifice and a reminder of those employees who lost their lives in the line of duty. John F. McGinnis, Roxanne McGee Dorsey, Lisa Vasquez. Robert Scully, Paula Carroll, Clyde Barker, Megan Lang. I represent uh, Phoenix Firefighters, Local 493. Um, I'm one of the union officers, and we have approximately 1,700 members, and that's uh, representing Phoenix Firefighters from firefighter on up the ranks through captain, and we even have a, uh, a chief's uh, chapter. Well, the, uh, the employee memorial ceremony is very significant to me. I'm also a member of our uh, fire department honor guard. I was the founding commander. And so right around the time we were creating our honor guard, the city was building the employee memorial. So to have a day where the city recognizes all employees, not just fire, but all the membership of the uh, city employees, it's, it's, it's an excellent way to display their, their, uh, their recognition the honoring of the service, and also to show the families how important that all of the employees really are to the city. So we have uh, 16 members of the firefighters union that have lost their lives in the line of duty. That's dating back to 1929 through the present time. A lot of the folks that we have on our, the employee wall as line of duty members, we have used their examples and their, the incident where they lost their lives to promote training, to, to teach our membership and instruct our, our firefighters 
to not end up in the same situations that those members were. What it, what it reflects is, is the city of Phoenix is a, is a great place to work. It, it treats its employees very well. And in turn, the employees do great jobs. And really, where, where that goes is that goes to the citizens. J.D. Sullivan. Ambrose Shea. Randolph J. Potts. Walter D. Kelson. Chauncey E. Ray, Jr. Dale R. Lockett. Ricky S. Pierce. Timothy J. Hale. Brett R. Tarver. Mark S. Carter. Brandy Shamadan. Brad Harper. Crystal Rezonico. Richard Rick Teus. Brian Beck, Jr. David Mathis. This year, due to the pandemic, we've also lost fellow city employees to COVID-19. The city of Phoenix has lost far too many members of our city family this year, and I want to send my condolences to their immediate families, but also their Phoenix family. I'm very proud that the city of Phoenix has taken COVID-19 and public health seriously. We know the work we do is essential and it has to continue. We really do come together as city employees during the worst times in our lives. The very first Arizonan to lose a life to COVID-19 to so many of the most recent passings, our city has been deeply impacted. This virus is vicious. I hope that in our duties and daily lives going forward, we won't forget the difficult lessons and the amazing people we lost this year. I've heard stories of each of the employees who have died of COVID and to their families, I wanna say, we feel your loss, we're sorry for your pain, and we're here for you as the Phoenix City family. And I've heard stories of the impact that each of these employees had on their coworkers and on the people that they served. And so we say, thank you, thank you for your service. And a reminder that the City Council has provided resources for families who are uh, suffering from the loss of a loved one, from city employees who have died of COVID. There are resources from the City Council available to help with expenses. 2020 was an incredibly difficult year. Moments like this are even harder because when we have deep loss, you want to hug, to touch, to be together. Thank you to all of our city employees who have made huge changes to their daily life to get through this, as well as continued to provide the amazing service that you do for all of our residents. It's been a hard year with more loss than I can ever remember. I hope we will come out stronger, more appreciative of each other, with more empathy. But thank you for all the changes you've made to get through very difficult events of 2020. May 2021 be easier and may we be together in person for the employee memorial. This is a beautiful memorial of glass and brick and it's a memory of the, the permanence of the memory of the employees we've lost. And this year we lost Commander Greg Carnicle from the police department and David Mathis of the fire department. Each of them serving the public in public safety, providing service, they died serving the community. We want to say thank you to the families, thank you to the police department and the fire department and all of our employees who serve in that way.